Thank you very much, David, for the introduction. Um, as David just said, the yeah, our intensive cropping uh, program in the northern part of Tasmania. Um, just a little bit of background on, on I guess, our cropping. We, we do grow an awful lot of different crops in, in typical Tasmanian fashion, I suppose. Um, what we normally do is, is grow, uh, you know, vegetables and um, after the vegetables come out, we, uh, we put uh, crops in like wheat and that for the fat lamb operation. So firstly, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Sydney My Fund. They have given me the, the space to go and travel and find out all the things I wanted to find out with uh, regarding waterlogging. And also a massive thank you to Nuffield Australia for giving me the opportunity. I'd also like to thank my wife, Sarah, our kids, Nina and George, and the Mill Farm team, Andy, Craig and Owen. For, without them, I wouldn't be able to leave the farm, travel and come back. Actually, when I come back, they said, well, it worked better when you was away. <laughs> and uh, on from that, uh, my wife also agreed. Um, so what was I hoping to find out in my travels? I wanted to find out the causes of waterlogging, what are the monitoring tools that are available. I wanted to find out the world's best practice to reduce that waterlogging. And also I wanted to find a systematic approach to, uh, to, to reduce the waterlogging and, its, and, its and in turn the yield losses. So why did I want to know, why did I want to know this? Our property is wet. It's heavy clay. Um, we have problems planting spring plant sown crops. We suffer from high, we suffer high yield losses from water logging. Our current drainage is inadequate, and also I want to build on our current system. So as I said a few minutes ago, we we do put uh, winter crop in, wheat and that sort of thing. So we've uh, we've got to try to, uh, to to use that to our advantage. So what are the causes of water logging? Rainfall, soil type, we can't change those two things. There's over irrigation, poor drainage, and compaction, which I think we can have a bit of a go at changing. So, what did I discover in my travels? So, one of the things I looked at was the over irrigation. I went to see Colin Hunt in Nebraska, in the USA, and their uh, crop metrics uh, pro, um, company offer a system where they have a whole holistic approach to all the things that you can monitor and change in agriculture in, in cropping. So they offer a soil survey, that gives you an EM38 map to topography, management zone selection, they help you with uh, soil moisture monitoring, rainfall modelling using multiple weather stations, vigour mapping, yield mapping, agronomy advice, irrigation scheduling and end of season uh, reviews. I guess they're, they're agronomy guys or they they call them um, uh, all the agronomy people out in the field, um, they, they are obviously are in the field looking at all that that's happening in the field, so that gives them a very, very good understanding of what's happening there and to give advice. So what do these maps look like? Most people here use an EM38 um, soil scanning map. This is one on the top left hand corner. And also at the same time you can gain an elevation map. Bigger mapping is uh, we use that in crop to, uh, to pick up uh, um, so, um, bigger and um, that gives you an in-crop, uh, I suppose there's a strategy there that it's like a yield map that we're using it while we're growing the crop and we can see that something is going to happen. We use a, a multi large system for that through the year. This is actually a field of our own home. And after the, the, the crop has been harvested, we get the yield data. We collect that data to see where our, our wheat patches are and what we can do about it. Obviously, you've got a ground truth. This area, by walking there to see is it too wet that's caused that problem, is it too dry, is it disease and everything else. And I think that's probably the, the, the big point. We've got to ground truth that by hand with our own eye. Um, using soil survey maps to create a management zone. So this is a really important thing. So in that, the last shot that we saw there, the different zones in that field from those uh, soil surveys. So that gives us a, an idea where we can put the moisture probes. So do we put them in the wettest patch of the paddock? Do we put them in the driest patch or an average? I think it's very important to, to put that in the right place. And these maps can also create a variable rate irrigation plan and scheduling. They can create a, uh, a prescription map for inputs like fertiliser, lime and gypsum and those sorts of things. So irrigation control, what did I see in my travels there? Um, so we can talk to a lot of farmers about this variable rate irrigation system. And it gives you the, the opportunity to use those soil survey maps, but also it gives you ideas to, um, you can actually go and look at the paddock by 
by eye can change these maps by your hand. So the, on the bottom right hand corner is the different squares there are uh, different uh, precipi precipitation rates of, irrigate, of the irrigator. So individually nozzle, nozzle control to give you those different rates. So you can pick and choose where you want to put what water on what part of the field. So what are the new exciting things happening in irrigation? What's the new technology? <coughs> I had a meeting with Alison McCarthy in the United Sorry, the University of Southern Queensland when I come back. Um, they're using like sensor systems on a, on a centre pivot irrigation. This is in a in a trial phase, and that gives us the opportunity, or gives them the opportunity to actually look at the crop using stress um, near infrared near infrared sensors, determining like computing that information, determining how much water they can actually put on it in that, each part of the paddock, and and but they're using the crop stress to actually determine this. So the same thing again. I think we've still got to ground truth that to make sure that we're doing the right thing there. So what about other irrigation options? We discovered a, a system called a Dragon Line. So this is actually turning a centre pivot into a drip irrigation type system. I thought this was pretty exciting technology. Um, I guess that means you can put on a certain amount of water over a longer period of time and not actually putting the water on top of the plant. So data stacking. So taking that multi-season or multi-layered thing throughout the season, like the, the NDVIs, the, the, the um, um, stress levels of each uh, across the, the field, and you can actually put one on top of the other after the other after you've used the, uh, the, the um, information from the soil scanning. And also, you yeah, can do a multi-season layering. So, and by doing this, you're getting a very, very powerful um, data management tool for making decisions. I went to visit Dustin Noonan and he's using this crop metric system, this holistic um, system. He's running over 50 centre pivots growing corn and soybeans. Um, I asked him how, how, did it, how does it go, you know, and he really, really liked the system. He said it's reduced his water, uh, water usage, it's increased his yield, it's reduced his waterlogged area, in turn boosted his profit. And he said that it's a great system because the scouts are out in the paddock looking all the time. And uh, they just use all that information to reduce waterlogging, as I say, and, and boost profit. And the, the little um, diagram on the bottom is that that's a, um, a crop matrix trial site. And as you can see, the, the red is uh, where they've increased their yield just from a, a holistic approach. So what does this mean and how are we going to use it on our property? Um, I think we can make better use of our local service providers. We've got some great service providers in Tasmania, and I think we can use them to our advantage. I want to look at a bit more of um, watershed st simulation, which we'll talk about in a second. But also, I want to collect more data, NDVIs. Um, I want to use variable irrigation on, on the, some of the pivots I've already got, so I install them, some of the pivots I've got, and also put in a couple of new systems. Uh, yield data collection. We are collecting as much data as, as we can, but as I said a few minutes ago, we're growing so many different crops, it's really hard to, to gain a good picture of what, we, what we've got when we've got big holes in our system from poppies, we're not, they're not yield mapping on poppy machines yet, and also the vegetable um, production like peas, um, potatoes. There is some of that around, I think it's coming, um, so it's one thing in the future we have to look out for. Because that leaves a big hole in our data on the yield. So watershed simulation, what is this? I discovered that um, there's some software around that you can actually put all the information into. You can use the soil, um, survey maps that I was just talking about a few minutes ago. Um, you can put the soil moisture um, information into that that's already there, precipitation, precipitation rate per hour, where in the field the, the water is actually um, being put. So what does that give you? It gives you the, where the water pools, how long does it start on the surface before it infiltrates, and also where does the water exit the field. So this gives you very, very powerful information for, for drainage. Speaking of drainage, it's not sexy, but it does make money. There's no big changes in the, the um, drainage industry. I, I travelled throughout the States, Canada, um, the Netherlands, and also the UK. To pretty much my study topic was on drainage, but I, I realised pretty quickly that it, I had to broaden my my thinking. Um, so I guess the biggest change is the adaption of GPS technology. So same thing again, doing a soil survey to start with. That gives it topography. Um, using that soil survey information, using software to design and determine where to put the pipes. Um, so that also gives you the, the, um, the size of the pipe, the placement, the depth, and also controls the installation machinery. 
I've got a quote that I actually picked up on my travels. For every one dollar spent on drainage technology, produces three to four dollars back in corn and soybean profits. Now that's a pretty big call, but I think of my own system at home or my own farm. I mean, we've we've had up to you know 50, 80, 100 percent losses in the past. So I think he's right. I think it's uh, and this is recouped over a fairly short period of time. And that data has been collected over 10 years of, of uh, trial work in the US. So what about drainage of our pro property? What are we going to do? Uh, we're going to, I wanted to use GPS technology to, as I say, use those uh, data maps that we can produce from uh, the soil surveying and the topography um, side of it. Install some raised beds and field drains using this GPS technology. It gives us some sort of idea where we should put them and, and what depth. And I think that uh, is quite important because we're only guessing pretty much at the moment. We know, I mean, everyone knows their own field and where the water sort of pulls or runs to, but we, sometimes the, 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 the drains get put in the wrong place. So I want to expand on the current systems we've already got. Um, a lot of the, the ones that we've already put in that haven't been mapped. We don't know where some are. Um, so it's a matter of finding them and, and mapping them and, uh, and expanding on that system. And also I want to ex um, improve our maintenance program. Because if you haven't got a good outfall on your drainage, the drainage is not worth anything. So that leads me to uh, how do we con control that compaction issue. As I say, we've, we're farming on heavy clay um, at home and it's, it's quite an issue with uh, compaction and uh, the way we farm I guess it, you know heavy harvesting machinery and, and, and the like it, uh, it does make it pretty tough. So one of the things I, I did have a look at was the control traffic farming model and how we can bring that back to Tasmania. And I wondered if strip tillage is an option for high rainfall zone farming. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of strip till? I discovered strip, strip till when I was in the US and uh, I was pretty impressed with, the, with how it, it, it works in their system but we've got a, a bit of a, a long way to go before I think we can uh, make it work in Tasmania context. Um, so it utilises the, the CTF system, the control traffic farming system. There's a massive reduction in tillage. Soil health through only working a portion of the field is gained. But are there yield penalties for going wide row spacings? and what crops can we grow under this system. So my intended work and the trial work that I wanted to do, I've already purchased a small tip, strip till machine with, with a couple of other farmers in Tasmania to trial. There's a lot more research to be tried, as I just said. Um, so we're going to grow as many crops as we can under this system and see if it actually does work. We're going to monitor those results and work towards, our aim is to work towards a full control traffic farming system using strip till. So where to now for us? I want to work with uh, service providers to implement a survey, sorry, implement a system to survey, monitor and control our water system to a, a higher degree. I want to expand our current drainage system using the latest technology. I want to keep researching and try to reduce compaction through and, um, better tillage practices through strip tillage and use of cover crops. I want to share that, in, share that information with others in the industry. So what are my recommendations to the industry? I think we should understand the true cost of waterlogging. Everywhere I go in Tasmania and Victoria and anywhere that's a high rainfall zone farming, I see lost production. I want to collect as much data as I can as possible. I want to make informed decisions on that data. Adapt a systematic approach using all the tools available to reduce the waterlogging. I want to share that knowledge and the outcomes with everyone. Before closing, I'd like to uh, say congratulations to the 2016 scholars because he's a hell of a ride. Thank you.